What's going on? It's your boy Sermon at Sermon's Domain on Twitter. Chance the Rapper has released his highly anticipated third mixtape titled Coloring Book. Chance is someone who has made so much innovation to the music industry. He was the first to put out a free project through iTunes with Surf. Um, you know, that was a social experiment. And now he's trying to petition to make the Grammys change to allow a free project to be nominated. And even if it doesn't, the way he's kind of building past that is having the project on Apple Music. It's exclusive for the first two weeks, and that means it's streaming. And I believe that's supposed to count, and it's, it's going to probably be on Spotify, all these other places. But it's not available to buy. It's not, you can't purchase it. So Chance is still trying to get around the system if they don't change it to allow a free mixtape to be nominated then he has the stream section covered and i think that alone should uh provide some eligibility and the fact that this is going to be one of the biggest releases of the year i think it might be the most flawless one so far um you know in terms of the rollout um we've seen uh, bad rollouts this year uh with kanye and rihanna but Chance has kind of just really been on point. He had the Chance posters. He he performed on Jimmy Fallon, and now he has the, you know this customizable merch that you can buy. It's just a really great rollout, and everything leads up to the music, which is simply amazing. I love that Chance. Uh, you can listen to Ten Days, and you can listen to Acid Rap, and you can listen to this project, and you can see just the evolution. You can see the evolution between the first two tapes, and then there's like this huge evolution between acid rap and coloring book. And I think that's due in part to what life has given Chance. He has a daughter now. And I wonder, like, if he didn't have a daughter, how, like, this album would have turned out, if it would have turned out the same way, if he already had this concept in his mind. But I really do like the project. And I'm going to be honest with you. I was not a big fan of Chance the Rapper, uh, like on Acid Rap in 10 Days. I've listened to those projects a couple times and I've tried to really grasp the concepts and, and really see what everyone else was seeing in it. And they're good projects, don't get me wrong, but the hype level was just way too high for me to really enjoy it. But here I'm experiencing Coloring Book and it, it lives up to that hype. I like that it sounds like a continuation to uh, the life of Pablo from earlier this year. You know, I, know, I remember Kanye was doing an interview. He was talking about how he wants this, um, he wants the life of Pablo to be looked at as like gospel rap. And I think Chance the Rapper takes it further. And, and I'm not 100% sure, but it could go either way in terms of like who inspired who. Maybe Chance already had this idea um, and then Kanye was inspired to try his own take on it. Or maybe Chance was inspired and, and really reworked Coloring Book in the last couple months. I don't know the whole scenario, the whole story, but they do kind of fit together. You can look at like an ultralight beam. You could put that on Coloring Book. It would fit in like that. Um, but like I said, I like the gospel feel, especially because it's it's very positive. That's what Chance's mission is to really provide some positive rap this time around. Now, don't get me wrong. He displays like this side where he can be aggressive, like on no problem. He talks about if one more label try to stop me, I'm going to have some dreadheads in your lobby. And in a way, he kind of reminds me of Kendrick Lamar. This is a loose comparison because Kendrick Lamar has said that he could put a rapper on life support, but that's not what we want. And, you know, Chance kind of does that on no problem. But ultimately, both of those artists who are capable of going in lyrically choose to create bodies of work that can be enjoyed from start to finish and that have concepts to them. And, you know, I think that's where the, the comparison stops. It's just like that loose goal, you know. They want to be full, complete artists as opposed to just being known for, like, the lyrical bars or whatnot. Um... I think one of the, the standouts for me was Juke Jam with Justin Bieber because Bieber sounds like he's in his like journals, uh, you know, pre-promise or pre-purpose, excuse me, uh, mode. And it might have been because you got to think, Chance has been working on this project for a while. So that record could have been 
uh, done back in 2013 when they did Confident from Journal. So I like that record. It was a standout to me. Um, another one that really rises above everything, I think I might be the perfect record on the project, is um, How Great. How Great is... Uh, it's like one long church sermon. You started off with Chance's cousin, whose name is Nicole. She's singing about how great God is, and it really feels like you're like in an audio church. And then Chance comes on and really blesses the mic. Um, he says, electrify the enemy like Hedwig till he petrified. Any petty Peter Pettigrew can get the pesticide. Now, say that five times twice. Now, if you've ever seen Harry Potter, then you get the reference Hedwig. Um, you know, he was killed in the seventh movie. Sorry if I just spoiled it. I'm, I apologize. Um, and then, you know, Peter Pettigrew was, um, you know, he was a rat in the, I think it was the third movie. Yeah, third movie. He was in there. He was he was disguised as a rat. And, you know, you give pesticides right you kind of kill him um so it, it's a really good line and then jay electronica cleans it all up with another like amazing verse jay electronica just doesn't realize how talented he is he said uh i spit on the title it's tidal waves i spit on the apple and kill a worm a fire in cali will swallow a valley for every african village burned those are some deep lyrics you know and, you know, it's open for or interpretation. I don't really want to break it down. But that whole verse is just full of, like, quotables. It's such a J Electronica verse. And it's one of the things that I like. I like having genius, like the rap genius, because I can look at the lyrics and then see others' interpretation and see, oh, maybe I can, you know, understand that a little bit better um, just off of that. And another record I got to highlight is Mixtape featuring Young Thug and Lil Yachty. Now, I wasn't too big on Chance's verse because he kind of feels like a chameleon. He's just adapting to, like, Young Thug's flow. It was too close to that. And even, like, a little bit on the sound. If you're not paying attention super closely, you could misinterpret uh, Chance's verse for sounding for being Thug. It could, you know, like that. And the one thing that I really enjoyed that I wasn't expecting to enjoy was Little Yachty's verse. It was a lot better than anything on his mixtape. Like I listened to the first four songs on his mixtape and I was like, this is garbage, this is awful. But between this verse and the one on Post Malone's mixtape, he kind of showed like a different side. One that's more, uh, in, in, what is the word? He sounds more like clear. And not trying to do that, like, awful auto-tune, like, mumble, you know, gargling type of stuff. But here he sounds like he's, you know, coherent. And, and it's just, uh, I was just surprised. That's all I can say. I was surprised on it. And the concept of mixtape is cool, too. Like, how Chance gets Young Thug and Lil Yachty because they've benefited a lot from mixtapes. You could essentially put a lot of artists on there. Um, another one that came to mind, which is also on the project, is Future. Future could have easily fit on the, the song because he's benefited a great deal from a mixtape run. So it would have made sense to have, you know, Future on there or someone else. And speaking of people that I would have loved to have seen on the project, I feel like Coloring Book is just screaming for an Anderson Pack verse. Now, or more of a presence, I should say. He's on the, the second blessing, which is the outro record. It's him, Ty Dolla Sign, BJ the Chicago Kid, and I, I can't remember if there's someone else, but Chance said on Twitter that the, those different names make up like the choir that sings uh, throughout the, the, the whole song. And I just wanted like more Anderson because he just would fit into this. Like, give him a hook, give him a verse, give him anything, everything. He would just sound amazing on the project. When you have like an album that's full of really strong quality work, there's some songs that aren't necessarily bad records, but they don't really like do anything for me. And that's one of the records was like Summer Friends. It's just kind of there. And then, you know, the, the drum sing special, um, what else? What else? Was there anything else? Um, 
I think Smoke Break too. Those three records in particular, they're just kind of there. They don't stand out as much as like everything else. Like I highlighted uh, a couple records in this review and then I talked about these records because they just don't, they didn't like have any quotables or any standout moments in the concepts. They're just kind of there. And that's not to say that they're not good records, but the other records that do stand out are just so strong. And those are my thoughts on Coloring Book. I'm sure I can go on and on, and I'm sure my opinion could change. I might grow to like those records that I just talked about, or I might not like a certain record that I talked about in this review later. Who knows? But Coloring Book, I would love to know what your thoughts are on the mixtape in the comment section below. And then like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, share the video. Follow me on Twitter at Sermons Domain. And as always, thank you for your time. I appreciate you for watching. And until next time, peace.